Hello and welcome to my presentation on CV and cover letters. So a little about me, um, my name is Emma McCallum. Um, I've lived in the borders on and off since I was seven years old. Um, I went to Heriot Watt University and got a degree in business organisation and then lived in London for 13 years where I worked in insurance and also the financial sectors. Uh, when I moved back up north, I did an online bookkeeping course uh, while the children were quite young. And then I also worked at Abbotsford doing marketing and PR. On leaving Abbotsford, I decided that I wanted a job that worked around family life. So I did freelance work doing mainly marketing and PR, bookkeeping, fundraising, project coordination, and recently have set up a business with my husband called McCallum's Consulting. Uh, so we are constantly looking for the next contract to come along. So having your CV up to date and relevant for the jobs you're applying for is really important. Okay, let's start with CV writing. So what is a CV? Perhaps this could be an open question to the class, if you can think uh, who has the best description of what they think the CV is. Basically, it's all about you. It's you selling yourself to future employers. It's a marketing document. It's your advert about yourself. Tell them all about you, your work history, your achievements, your skills, your abilities, and why they should be wanting to employ you over the next one they're looking at. You need to explain and highlight why you think you're the best person for the job based on the past experience of things you've been doing in work and at school. Your CV only has six seconds to impress that employer, so you must make it good. It must be perfect. It must be punchy, it must sell you and make them want to read more. So what should be included in your CV? This could be a chance to press pause and write down your thoughts um, and see how right you are against what I'm about to tell you. Obviously, number one thing to include is your name and your contact details using a telephone number and your email address. You should next write a personal statement. Some people find this really difficult to write because it feels like you're bragging about yourself. But basically, you want to put out there your good attributes. You may want to say that you are a confident, uh, forward-thinking team player. You may say you work well on you as an individual as well as in the team. But you just have to give some thought about what you are very good at, which will make you stand out from the next CV which comes along. Next, you need to list your education and qualifications, starting off with your most recent qualification or your most recent school you went to and, and going down in history. Likewise, with your employment history and work experience, add the most recent job you've had and then follow it on by the jobs you had prior to that and list very briefly your tasks and responsibilities in each of those jobs. Also include any voluntary roles you may have had, which may have included helping at school or helping in clubs uh, or even one of your neighbours. Um, hobbies and interests show that you have a rounded experience of life and that you've got some interest out with school and you enjoy your sports so you may want to include anything from cycling to rollerblading to skating or even if it's something like reading or gaming if you're looking for a job in the IT industry. Uh, the final thing is to include is your references. You don't need to write down the people you're going to use as your referees but it's important to let the employer know that you have references. Usually you have two, one personal one and one for a previous employee. Here are a few do's and don'ts when writing your CV. Never handwrite your CV, it must always be typed using a clear black font such as Arial or Times New Roman. However good you think your handwriting is, I'm afraid it has to be typed. Never include pictures or photographs. In the old days we used to be encouraged to add a photograph but now it must never be included in your, with your CV. Very important, obviously, to check your spelling and your grammar. Nothing worse than a badly written sentence uh, when you're trying to find a job. Make sure it looks good. So the layout has to be clear, concise, no big blocks of text. Just make it look it clean. And a maximum of two pages of A4 white paper, not pink, green, turquoise, white. Um, if you haven't got enough to fill two pages, I would stick to one page and make sure it looks pleasing on the eye. When you're choosing an email address, don't use something silly like Joe Bloggs is a dude or 
Jim is a legend, make sure you use your name or something which is not, not offensive and not boasting. Also, don't exaggerate about yourself. Use positive words to describe yourself, but don't overdo it because everyone can see that a mile off. Always tailor your CV to the job that you're applying for. Use the job description to choose words. I once applied for a job which I thought I was well qualified to get and I never even got an interview and I rang up for feedback and they told me that I hadn't really answered the questions that have been asked in the job description in my CV. So always look at what, what they're wanting and make sure you make your CV answer those questions. Make sure it's up to date and accurate so if you get new qualifications or you've had a new job or a new role that that's always on your CV so it's ready for the next time you're sending it out. There are loads of t templates you can download off Google which will help you um, when you're starting off on your first CV and I suggest that you use them. Any of you who have watched The Apprentice will know it's really, really cringy when they go for their interview stages and they're going through their CV and most of them are a pack of lies. Uh, so make sure you tell the truth because it will have a habit of coming and catching you out if you don't. Cover letters. So what is a cover letter? It's that first good impression that you need to make. You send it along with your CV when applying for jobs. It's the introduction to your CV. It sells your application and makes them click on that attachment on that email to make them want to read your CV. So hopefully then you'll get an interview for your job. You use it to explain why you're the best candidate for the job and to compliment your CV before they read it. It's very important to address a cover letter correctly. First impressions make such a difference. So if you're writing your cover letter to a specific person, like Mr. Roberts, I've used an example here, make sure you sign off as your sincerely. Or if you're writing to a generic person, sir, madam, hiring manager, make sure you sign off yours faithfully. This is really, really important to show you're professional and business-like and know what you're doing. So what should be included in your cover letter? The first paragraph will explain why you're writing and probably where you saw the job advertised. So I'm writing to apply for the position of X, which I saw advertised in the Southern Reporter, for example. Uh, set the next two paragraphs are really explaining why you think as an individual you're suitable for this job and what you can bring to the business for them. The final paragraph really is a sum up of your suitability for the role and a uh, rounding up of the letter and hoping that they will want to read more and then click open your CV. Here are a few do's and don'ts when writing your cover letter. Make sure it's concise, it's not just a regurgitation of your CV, it's inviting them to want to read your CV, remember. Tailor it to the organisation you're writing to and the, and the role you're applying for, don't make it too generic, make sure you're answering the questions that they're asking you. Make sure it uses the same font and size of font as your CV did. And also identify your USPs or your unique selling points. What you're, remember, you're still selling yourself even though it's just a cover letter. And be enthusiastic and be interested in the job that you're applying for. But don't be over the top. You've still got to remain professional. And most importantly, uh, as before, uh, make sure you proofread it for typos. Obviously, the number one thing is to get yourself a job you're interested in um, and send your CV in for. Um, so keep an eye out on adverts in the newspapers or even in shop windows. Um, but don't be afraid to go in and ask on spec or ask for work experience which might lead to another job. Word of mouth is another very good way for finding jobs and don't think it's cheating. Uh, it can be a very good introduction because it means that the person introducing you thinks you're a hard worker and trustworthy. There are online recruiters such as Indeed um, and also Facebook and LinkedIn have job adverts running quite often. So normally now I'd ask if anyone had any questions. Obviously I'm not here to answer any but I'm sure your teachers will be and if anyone has any other questions or wants any help um, please feel free to contact me and I'm happy to help anyone who would like it. Thank you for listening.